evening, everybody. Such a beautiful night. So thank you if you're tuning in now, taking time away from this gorgeous weather. Or if you're watching later, thank you for participating in these free yoga classes. Uh, tonight we will have a 75 minute half a yoga practice. And just a heads up that tomorrow will be at 7.15. It will be yin and yoga nidra. And then Saturday morning will be a 9.15 power yoga class for 90 minutes. So just a few days ahead. It's coming into, I think, about the fourth week that I've been doing this. And it's been really, uh, really joyful for me to share it with you. And not only good for my physical practice, but it's really interesting to learn to teach and do yoga at the same time. So I'm building a lot of endurance. And tonight I'll pull out one of the cards from the Whispers of Lord Ganesha cards. I love them. They always have such impactful messages. I don't know, you know, it's hard for us to always get outside and see what's going out in the world, but even with all of the difficulty of things that are happening around us, there's so much beauty to take in right now. The cherry blossom trees everywhere and the beautiful blue sky, depending where you are in the world, of course. But here it's been really nice and it's inspiring, it kind of brings a sense of hope, even though times are difficult. The world still goes on no matter what. Okay, well shuffled the deck. Let's see what the message is for today. Maybe you can think about something that you might be working through in your life and maybe how this message of this card relates. And this is actually a card that we've drawn before, but I really like it and I'll draw it again. This is about empowerment and it represents Manipura Chakra, the solar plexus. So I'll read to you about empowerment. That what I've been thinking about is that on starting on Tuesday after this long weekend, I'll be actually back working at my school where I'm a teacher. Uh, but instead of my regular position, which is supporting kids who have special needs, which I'm sort of doing online right now, I will be working with kids whose parents are essential workers and they need daycare and they also need help with their schoolwork. So it will be interesting to uh, really adapt to that role. So that's what I've been thinking about. So I'll find out maybe a little deeper, uh, a little deeper message to help me. It says, rely on your inner strength to ensure your dreams are realized. Sense your personal power, your confidence responsibility and reliability. The energy from this card is a feeling of optimism and positive energy. Dreams and long-term goals are becoming reality. If you have been lethargic or unmotivated, take time to tune into your personal power. And I know I've had many messages from people lately about how it's hard to find a routine, it's hard to stay motivated, it's hard to feel any norm normal, uh, like normality during this time. And the yoga practice is always something I can keep coming back to kind of keeps that routine and normalcy. Yellow is associated with the solar plexus chakra, Manipura, which is the third chakra. This chakra is considered to be at the core of your being, your power center. Here is the home of your self-esteem, your willpower, self-discipline, and your personality. It represents the important purpose for your lifetime here on earth. You are awakening to your personal power and the memory of yourself as a soul. Your healing will be complete when you see the light of your soul and know that the light is who you truly are. Every time you criticize yourself, you weaken your resolve. Loving and accepting yourself and acknowledging your value are the foundation of a balanced solar plexus. When the solar plexus chakra is in balance, you are confident and empowered with a healthy level of self-esteem. You have respect for yourself as well as respect for others. You have a strong sense of self and your personal power and you use it responsibly. Be confident in your talents, love yourself, be willing to powerfully express yourself. Choose to be direct with your desires at this time. If you are asking about a decision, all indications are that the time to act is now. You can just let those thoughts simmer in there as we set ourselves up for our practice and it will be in a nice, oh, I was gonna take the card out actually. On top, good. Take the cart out and put it by my little Ganesha statue over here. 
find a nice tall seat and get connected to your breath. And again, we have this beautiful music tonight from these amazing musicians that donate their music for free yoga classes. So even though it's been somewhat repetitive, I still want to play their music to, to honor them that they're willing to share this gift that they have with all of us. Yeah. Soul Rising and DJ Taz Rashid. So thinking about empowerment and how it is that, that you show up, what it is that you bring to this practice, the gifts that you have to share with the world and feeling confident with them. And find a word that you can create for your practice tonight, your own personal intention, maybe a sankalpa, like a longer phrase or mantra. And also, right now, when we're all in this together, I mean, we're always in it together, but especially now supporting one another in so many ways, find a collective intention, something that you can send out into a greater community, wider than yourself. It could be a small community, it could be something big, it could be the whole world. So weave your personal and collective intentions together. Bring them to your heart center, Anjali Mudra. Make a wish for yourself or for someone else. And most importantly for your dedication of your practice. Who are you sending this energy to? You know, it's so important right now to thank so many people in our community. And I've made a point of it every time I go to the grocery store, anywhere where people are still working, to thank them. I haven't, I fortunately have not been near a hospital, but I have many friends who work in the medical profession, and some of them are probably tuned into this class right now. So I want to especially thank you. You and all the teachers trying to adapt and change and make sure that the kids get the education that they deserve and that they need really hard right now to make some of the changes that we're making so again we're all in this together so dedicate the energy out wherever you like and let's create a collective ohm send out that vibration of peace of harmony universal togetherness unity deep inhale breath through your nose big sigh out your mouth exhale Inhale for O. Oh. Breathe into the space. Soften as you exhale. Just allow that feeling, that sensation of the O in a few deep breaths. It softens everything. It might even Lift the corners of your mouth and allow you to feel just a little more grounded, a little more connected. Bow your mind into the beautiful light of your own heart. Bring your gaze back through center as your eyes blink open. Release your palms and we'll make our way onto our hands and knees. So you can either shift to the side or cross over your ankles and roll forward. Chakra Vakasana. Palms under your shoulders, knees under your hips, toes are tucked. And in today's practice, of course, as always, make it your own. If you want to add in vinyasas when I offer you the opportunity or make the poses more challenging or modified, totally up to you. Really listen to yourself. Take a breath in here as you tip your tailbone up, tummy down, chest up, look up. As you exhale, untuck the toes, round the spine, chin to your chest, look to your solar plexus, power center. Tuck the toes, inhale, tailbone up, tummy down, chest up. Exhale, round the spine. And from here, we'll come into a little bit of a shoulder opener. So keep your toes tucked, lift your right arm up to the sky. As you exhale, thread your right arm underneath your left arm. Bend that elbow a lot. Let your top arm maybe extend forward toward the top of the mat. Keep your fingers tented. Left palm underneath your shoulder, push yourself back up, let your right arm extend and bring it back down. Same thing, other side, left arm, reach it up, big breath, open up, 
slide your left arm underneath, come to the outer left shoulder. Right fingertips can stay where they are or extend the palm. Roll your outer right shoulder down, deep breath in and out. And start to find that deeper breath, the longer, smoother breath. One more full round. Right hand comes back to the mat to support you to lift back up, reach up, hands back down to the mat. Take your hands a little bit further forward than your shoulders, tuck your toes on your inhale breath, pull your hips back and up. Keep your knees bent and focus on lengthening the hips away from your hands. Look at your fingers, press your finger pads down. Thumb and index finger especially rooting down so you can draw the eye of the elbows in and then drop your head. Look between your inner thighs, keep your knees bent. Deep breath in and a deep breath out. You can always come to tabletop or child pose from this position. One more breath in, lift your hips higher. Press your hips back. Now try to straighten your legs and your inhale legs lengthen. Exhale, press your heels down. Let's bend the knees on our inhale, pull the hips back and up. Exhale, straighten the legs, press your heels down. One more time, bend your knees, hips pull back and up. Exhale, straighten the legs, press your heels down. And now let's come to child pose, which is always accessible. Knees lower, big toes touch, hips to heels. Forehead down, let your arms for a couple of breaths lay beside your hips. Let the weight of your head and your shoulders Roll forward, feel that nice rounding in the upper back. Relax the shoulders over your thigh. Now let your arms release forward. Tent your fingertips, lift your arm bones up. On your inhale, walk your hands over to the right side of your mat and pull your hips back to the left. Let your ears be in line with your arms, forehead down. Deep breath in. And breath out. You pick up your hands, walk them back through center, keep those fingers tented all the way to the left, stretching into the right side, pull your hips to the right as fingertips move to the left, let your ears be in line with your arms. One more breath here. And press into your hands, root into your fingertips. Pull yourself back and up. Adho Mukha Svanasana, Downward Dog. Take an inhale, lift your right leg up to the sky. Start to stack it open. Bend your knee, drop your foot behind you. Open up your shoulders, so tend your right fingertips. Look underneath your right arm and spin your ribcage toward the sky. See if you can lift your right knee a little higher. Let the foot draw up on the exhale. Inhale back through center, both hands down. Let's come into a modified pigeon pose, so deer pose. So right shin comes forward, left, right hip lowers down. Bring your left knee behind your right foot. Turn to the center, inhale. Exhale, fold forward over your thigh. Deep breath in. And a deep breath out. Inhale. Exhale. You're welcome to stay here. If you'd like to go deeper, tend your fingertips like fingers done cobra. Slide your left leg back behind you, tuck your toes, and pull your right hip back, coming into couple tucks in a pigeon. So you're welcome to stay lower down in deer pose if you like, especially if you have, have tight hips and you just need more of a restorative posture. Otherwise, tend your fingertips. Little cupcake hands, I like to say. Imagine that you have your fingers over top of the cupcake, so don't squish the icing. Take a deep inhale. Just like finger stand cobra, exhale, let's lower down, elbows tip up. Inhale, rise back up, find your back bend. Exhale, lower down. 
Inhale, find your back bend. Exhale, lower down. One more. Inhale, find your back bend. Exhale to lower. And you can stay here. You can bring your hands forward onto your forearms. Maybe you just hold on to your forehead. Maybe you come all the way down. Wherever you are, try to square your hips to the mat. Keep your left toes tucked. Slide that left knee further back. If you're in deer pose, you're still relaxing. Very similar benefits for the opening of the right hip. Two more deep breaths. Our last breath, you can stay upright or folded. We'll take one Ramari breath, which is a humming sound with the lips closed. A deep inhale. Keeping that breath to soften the nervous system. Bring your palms back under your shoulders. Shift your way back to downward dog. Just pedal at your heels for a couple of times. This time we'll inhale, left leg lifts to the sky. Spread your fingers, step your hip, bend your knee, drop your foot to the right side. This time you can tip your left fingertips and look under your left arm. So get a big open stretch here. Try to lift your knee higher, drop your foot more. Right heel pressing toward the mat. Inhale, back to center. Let's bring it through again, either for deer pose. Well, we'll start with deer pose. So you can stay here and just lower down, see how that feels. Check that out. If you want more, you'll tend your fingertips out behind you. Slide your right leg back, rotate your hips forward, finding couple toss in a pigeon pose. You're welcome to stay lower down if you like, or lift yourself up here. Vikarita couple toss in exalted pigeon. Inhale, exhale, lower down to a resting pigeon. Inhale, exalt with your heart. Exhale, resting. One more inhale. You're welcome to lift all the way back up as you like, or you can start to walk your fingertips forward. Whichever variation you're in, fold down if you like. You can always tent your forehead with your fingertips to support. You can always use a block or come all the way down. Wherever you are here, we'll take three deep breaths before the Brahmari breath. Try to roll your right hip more to the mat, opening into the left hip in either variation. Last line of breath here. And then the Brahmari breath. Inhale through your nose. Mm. Making our way back into downward dog. Palms come underneath the shoulders. Tuck your back toes. Lift that leg up. And lower it down. You're welcome to stay here three breaths or take a vinyasa or guide you through that. Inhale, ripple forward, high plank. Lower down to your belly slowly. Take a back bend, cobra, upward dog. Lower back down and make your way to downward dog. And you might have a more intensive vinyasa. Up to you. Deep inhale. Long exhale. Lift your right leg up and step it through. Inside of your right arm, back heel spins down. Hip distance apart with the heels, rise up. Do you have a dress in a one, or your one? Front knee over the ankle, outer right hip pull back, outer left foot. Using as a, uh, using your outer left foot as a leverage, like pull your outer right hip back. It's like an anchor to help you to rotate the hips and keep that strong stability. Take an inhale here, reach up. Exhale, hands float to the lower back. You can hold your hands at your sacrum, but try to close the hands together. Lengthen your chest forward and up. Maybe the arms lengthen down, knuckles toward the heels. Lift your heart to the sky, deep breath in. Stay here or bow forward. Bado the drop some bound or humble warrior. Let your chin come to chest, arms up and over the head. 
Keep pulling your outer right hip back. Let your head hang. Use the foundation of your feet. That left outer foot is an anchor. Right heel pressing down. One more round of breath. Press into your feet. Inhale, rise up. Reach your arms up to the sky. Stay here. Bend into that front knee. And now keeping your right foot and right hip stable. Peel your back heel off the mat and maybe wiggle your back toes further back. High crescent lunge. Soften your left knee. Get more vertical in the spine. Reach your arms up to the sky. And if you need, you can lower that left knee all the way down or stay in the high position. So now your left toes are like an anchor. Your right heel is like an anchor. Align your hips. Right foot pulling back. Left thigh forward. Inhale, lift your chest. Exhale, twist to your right side. Let's do that a few times. Inhale, stabilize with the anchors of your feet. Exhale, pull your right hip back. Look to your right thumb. Inhale, back to your center. Exhale, give yourself a twist. Stay here, maybe hands to your heart. Maybe right hand to the back of your left thigh. Reach up and back. Little rotation on Exalted Warrior. Deep breath in. Long breath out. On your inhale breath, peel both hands back down to the mat. You're welcome to take a vinyasa or step back to downward dog. So you choose. Take three deep breaths with wherever you decide to be. From downward facing dog, left leg lifts. Step it through. Find warrior one, back heel spins down, hip distance between your heels, deepen into that front knee. Try to use that right outer foot as an anchor, left heel as an anchor, and pull your hips so they're parallel to the front of the mat. Knee over the ankle, keep lengthening up through the spine, deep inhale, nice long exhale. One more inhale, exhale. Now allow your hands to float to your lower back. Take the opposite grip. So we often grip without thinking about it. Switch that up. Get the opposite thumb on top. Hands can stay at the sacrum with your elbows bent, but knuckles are pushing toward the earth. Chest lifts toward the sky. Stay here. Lengthen the arms. Shoulders back. Heart lifting. Inhale. Exhale. Bow forward over that front thigh. Let the head come down. Arms lift up. Go as deep as you like here. Chin toward the chest, look underneath your body. Outer left hip pulling back, outer right foot pressing down. And now slowly start to rise up, reach your arms up to the sky. Bend your left knee and peel your left heel or right heel off the mat. Might need to wiggle your toes further back for high crescent lunge. Soften your right knee, so get more vertical in the spine, and then straighten out that back leg. Rock the heel forward. Take an inhale breath to lengthen. Exhale, twist to your left side. Look to your back thumb. Outer left hip pulling back. Two more times, slow motion with the breath. Exhale, give yourself a twist. Inhale, back through center, reach up. Again, twist to the left, pull your outer left hip back, look to your thumb, stay here, hands to your heart, or maybe this rotation and exalted warrior, deep breath in, and a long breath out. Two more, inhale, exhale, last one, inhale, exhale, super slow motion. Reach back up to the sky, hands plant down, tabletop, downward dog, or child pose, or vinyasa. Three breaths. You can inhale breath, lift your right leg up, stack your hips, open your knees. Let that foot drop behind you. Big inhale, breath. As you exhale, slow motion. Knee to chest. Come forward. 
Round the upper spine, so draw your belly in. That's Manapura Chakra. Keep it strong. Look to the center of your thumbs and lightly land your right heel there. Back heel stints down, front heel to back arch alignment. Pull your outer right hip back, and as you're ready, rise up. You have a dress in a two, warrior two. So there is a long stance here. So much so that your front knee stays over the ankle, and one day you have the space for the front leg to get parallel. So if you need to, you widen your stance. Your outer left foot is an anchor, your right heel is an anchor. Push down into those, and then extend your arms forward and back as you go a little deeper. Take an inhale here, exhale deeper. And now on your inhale, reach your arms up to the sky for a triangle shape. Look up if you like. Exhale, back to the warrior two. You want a triangle shape, inhale. Exhale. Last one. Inhale. Exhale. Now keep your arms where they are. Inhale, just your front leg to straight. Heel toe your back foot in. Hinge forward as you breathe. Exhale, Trikonasana, triangle pose. Open your top shoulder. Outer left hip rolling open. Outer right thigh rolling under. Try to keep the crown of your head in line with your spine. You can look down, you can look straight ahead or look up to your top hand. Three more deep breaths. Feel free to use a block inside or outside of your right foot. Try to keep it light with your hand. Keep lifting through the chest. Soften your right knee, bring both hands down to the mat. Step your left foot back. You're in a lunge position, three-legged dog, inhale. And now as you exhale, bring your knee to your chest and cross your right ankle over your left thigh. This comes from my friend David. He did it again today in his class, which I love. So hi, David, if you're watching. Bend your left knee, come high on your left toes and find a pigeon here in downward dog. Really nice hip opener, deep inhale. Long exhale. One more, inhale. Exhale. Release three-legged dog, downward facing dog. Stay here, feel free to take that vinyasa if you like, or any resting pose. On your next inhale, left leg lift to the sky, open it up, bend your knee, look underneath your left arm, big opening here. Exhale, bring your knee to your chest, use your strong core, rock forward, knee to chest, look forward. Step your left foot between your thumbs, back heel spins down. As you're ready, rise up, you have a draw center two again. Get that long stance, often we need to create more space between the feet, so feel free to set that up. Don't wait to go deeper, go deeper right away. Your outer left thigh is turning under, your inner right thigh turning open, and your feet are anchors here. They're all like hugging in toward each other as you go deeper. So find that connection and you feel that connection right in the core. Extend your fingertips forward and back. Relax your shoulders, stay strong. Deep inhale. Exhale. One more here, inhale. Exhale, inhale, straighten your leg. Look up if you like, triangle shape. Exhale, bend back into it. Two more. Inhale. Connect the breath and movement. Exhale. Last time. Inhale. Exhale. Just the front leg straightens. Shorten your stance now. Just a little bit. A couple of heel toes. Inward. Inhale. Tip forward. And find Trikonasana triangle pose. Set yourself up in the same way. Either fingertips onto a block or lightly down to the mat or floating inside your left leg or outside your left leg. Two more breaths. Soften your front knee. Bring your hands down to the mat. Step back, three-legged dog. And then bring your left foot 
on top of your right thigh, bend your right knee a lot. Pull the hips back and up, lift your right heel. Find pigeon pose in downward dog. Deep breath in, and a long breath out. Inhale, exhale, one more. And sweep your left leg up, lower it down, vinyasa or rest. Child pose might be really nice right here. Dog is taking a different shape. Inhale, ripple forward, high plank pose. We teach a chaturanga dandasana, a little bit of core strength here. You can always lower your knees, draw the belly button into the spine as you press the hips forward and down. Keep rooting into your finger pads. See if you can dome up the space between your shoulders. Take one more inhale breath here and draw the belly in, press the hips down on the exhale. So core engaged. Lower your right leg down to the mat, spin your right toes behind you. Inner blade of your left foot presses down, reach your arms up, Ardha Vashastasana, half or supported side plank pose. You're welcome to go to full side plank if you like, Vashastasana. Reach your top arm over your head, maybe look underneath your top arm. You're welcome to stay here or float your left leg if your right knee is down. You can float your left leg if your right foot is down as well. Stay here or bend your left knee, reach for your foot, kick it into your hand, roll your heart open. And release. Slowly come back. Take a little mini vinyasa here, lower all the way down to your belly. Lift your heart, cobra. Lower it back down, push back, downward dog. Deep inhale, long exhale. Again, ripple forward, high plank pose. Lower your left knee, kickstand your foot behind you. Roll to the inner blade of your right foot. Reach your top arm up, Ardha Vashastasana. Go to full if you like, stay here. Reach your top arm over your head. Then you can stay or lift your right leg up. Keep it active, maybe bend your knee. Reach for the top of your foot, kick it into your hand. Supported Kapinjalasana. Deep breath in. And a deep breath out. One more. Inhale. Roll your top shoulder open. Exhale. Beautiful. Release. Back to high plank. Inhale. And this time as you exhale, lower all the way down onto your belly. And we'll do some progressive back bending here. Lying onto your belly isn't good. You can always lie onto your back for a little bridge or supported bridge. Let's start with Diparita Bhujangasana, Exalted Cobra. So again, cupcake hands, root the tops of your feet down, don't squish the icing. Tip your elbows forward. On your inhale breath, root your feet and legs down and lift your heart up. Exhale to lower down and let's add in a twist. Inhale, lift your heart. Right shoulder down, look over your left. Inhale, back through center. Left shoulder down, look over your right. Inhale through center. Exhale, lower straight back down. Take a little rest, forehead on your palm. Let's do the same thing with three cobra poses. Palms beside your body, elbows in. Feel free to come up higher each time or float your palms. Inhale, lengthen, cobra. Chest up, shoulders back. Exhale to lower. Inhale, cobra. Exhale to lower. One more time and we'll hold for three breaths wherever you are. Lengthening the front line of the body, especially the belly and the heart. Last big inhale. Exhale takes you all the way back down again. Make a pillow with your hands. Forehead down. 
Do you like bend your knees, windshield wiper your feet side to side. So option for cobra pose again. Or Urdhva Mukha Svanasana, upward dog. Press into your hands, draw the elbows back, shoulders back. Lift your heart or start to lift your chest through, lifting the thighs up. Stay here for a couple of breaths, whichever back bend you've chosen. Maybe lift the gaze, direct the energy to your third eye, between the eyebrows, roll the eyes up. Roll over the toes if you need, come all the way back down. One more pillow with the hand. Bend your knees if you like, windshield wiper side to side. And then bring your right knee out to the right, a little half frog pose here. And cactus your arm. You're welcome to stay here, maybe you turn your gaze to the right side. Or a little extra twist, turn to the left. For three deep breaths. And slowly come back through center. Let's switch sides. Left knee comes out to the left. 90 degree angle. You can turn your gaze to the left or a little extra twist. Turn your head to the right. Three deep breaths. Maybe wider than your mat. Toes touch and you're up in the air. We'll do a few pelvic rocks here back and forth to child pose. So elbows in tight. Push up. All the way back. Hips to heels. Forehead down. Exhale. Inhale. Come up to the center. Exhale. Lower down. A few more times. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Come forward. Exhale, push back. And we'll stay here in child pose for a few deep breaths. If you like, arms can stay extended. They can come beside you. Or you can take a variation of Anahatasana. Palms touch. Elbows bend. Thumbs to the nape of the neck. Wherever you are, take a few deep breaths. Feel free to take the Brahmari breath, the humming sound, or sigh out your mouth as you exhale. Signal your nervous system to relax. I know I can see little messages popping up on the screen. I, I have a little mirror so I can see them, make sure my video is still going, but I can't see it from here who it exactly it is. So I'll read them later. Thank you so much to all of you. So many beautiful messages during the class and after the class. And feel free to share these videos with anybody on Facebook too. All right, from child pose, let's release the arms back in front. Slowly start to roll yourself up. From here, our last and final back bend for the practice. Well, we have lots of other poses, but this is a deep back bend, Ustrasana camel pose. If this is not accessible for you tonight, you can lay down onto your back for supported bridge or bridge pose. Otherwise, come up onto your mat. Feel free to roll your mat up as well underneath your knees if you need a little extra padding. Tuck your toes. Feel free to take a block if you have one or even a book and squeeze it between your inner thighs on the shortest setting or <laughs> the sticky block or between your ankles on the wider setting. So it helps you to hug in, to integrate. Hands to the lower back. I like to have my fingertips down, but sometimes people like to push them up, especially if you do a lot of vinyasa practice, that might be nice. Roll the sacrum down, so tuck your tailbone towards your heels. Roll the shoulders back and down, lift your chest, and start to arch back. And if you've got the block, hugging into the block. You're welcome to stay here. Chin can stay into the chest as well, as protecting your neck, or maybe you start to look up, or maybe drop the head back. You can stay here for the first set. If you have a deeper practice, you can start to swim your right arm back with a big back stroke lightly touching the right heel, same thing for the left side, or just stay. 
This time take three more deep breaths. Keep pressing your thighs forward, lift up and out of the pelvis. When you're ready to come down, supporting your lower back, chin is last thing to come out of the posture. So lower your hips and tuck your toes, take the blocks out, chin toward your chest. And place one hand on your heart and one hand over top. Remind your, yourself that you're still here. Take a deep breath. And come back to your personal and collective intention to your dedication and make sure that's still resonating with you. And have a second set of that back bend. If you have a practice of dropping backs, a lot of my regular students do, you're welcome to try that. You're also welcome to untuck your toes for a deeper back bend without the drop back. The knees will be a little bit wider. Feet are untucked, so it looks uh, maybe like this from the back. Wherever you decide to go, really monitor yourself. If you're going for the drop back, your feet and, and knees are hip distance apart, hands are at the heart, and you can even practice here as you like. So set yourself up for your variation. You start to lift up and out of the pelvis. Tailbone tilting down toward the heels, maybe lifting the head back, maybe reaching back. Maybe you're touching your heel. Wherever you are, try to hold for three more deep breaths. to come out and tuck your toes if they're tucked chin is last thing to come down again sit back onto your shins or cross-legged place your hands over your heart maybe one hand on one accord chakra it's your place of empowerment how it is that you show up on your mat and what fuels your practice how do you share yourself with the world how do you show up in the world way onto our seat so you can take your hands to one side shift your legs up from underneath you extending your legs all the way forward roll the flesh around your seat from side to side take your fingertips out wide starting with dundas in the staff pose and then arms reach all the way up to the sky big breath we'll do a little bit of a wave exhale wave forward Soften your knees as much as you need. Inhale, rise all the way back up. Exhale, wave forward. Inhale, wave all the way back up. Exhale, wave forward again. Stay here. Lengthen, lift your chest, and then fold all the way down. Wherever you are, let your head soften, chin to chest. Knees can always be bent. Feel the back line of your body lengthening here. Every time you exhale, allow the weight of your body to come a little bit more forward. So straighten your legs as you stay and hold for three more deep breaths. the left knee to the left, Janu Shirshasana, fingertips out to the side. I'll offer a twist with this as well. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale to hinge forward. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale to fold. You can stay here, or for the twist, take your left hand on the outside of your right foot. Take your right out, fingertips out wide, and pull yourself more to the right. You feel this nice stretch in the lower left of your spine. Maybe into hopefully the IT band of your right leg. Keep pulling your outer right hip back, keep pulling to the right, and you'll feel it. Keep 
Take your time to inhale yourself all the way back up through center. Shimmy a little bit to the right side. Left fingertips behind you, pointing away. Turn your right toes down and sweep up and back. Open up the front line of the body. Big breath. Supported back bend. Slowly coming back down. Let's take our right leg out to the right. Keep your left foot connected to your inner thigh. You still can face the front of your mat. Right forearm on the top of your right leg or inside. Left hand to your left hip. Turn and twist open. You might need to stand higher. That's fine too. Wherever you can go. Keeping the right foot active. Flex your toes toward you. Feel pressing out. Stay here. Or your inhale breath takes your left arm up and over your ear. But you can still see me there, so I'm just going to turn this way a little bit. Maybe you can go deeper, maybe you can find your foot, maybe both hands find. Keep your left sitting bones rooted down, outer left hip pressing down. Maybe look underneath you as we've been doing. Beautiful, release all the way back up. Release both your legs out in front. Little reverse tabletop here. Plant your feet down in front of your knees, fingertips pointing toward your hips. Inhale, lift your hips up. Maybe look back. Keep pressing into your feet, lift your hips higher. Maybe drop the head all the way back. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale to soften all the way down. Extend your legs, and maybe shimmy a little bit to your left side, right knee in toward your chest. Sit up nice and tall, and then connect the right foot to the inner left leg, down to your shasana. Inhale, reach your arms up to the sky, big stretch. Exhale, fold forward, reaching for anywhere you can on your left leg. Inhale to lengthen, exhale to release. Stay here or find that little twist. To get especially to the IT band and the lower back, right hand to the outer left foot, left hand reaches out wide. Find that cupcake hand and pull yourself to the left. right knee on the mat, so shimmy a bit if you need. Right fingertips behind you, turn your left toes down, sweep up and back, open your heart, big stretch. As you're ready, inhale yourself all the way back down. Take your left leg more out to the left, a bit more of an angle, still facing the front of your mat, or you can turn on your mat. Left forearm somewhere on the top or inside of your left leg. Keep your sitting bones rooted down as you roll your right hand to your right hip and turn it open. Or turn your chest open. Inhale, reach your right arm up and over your ear. Try to find that same kind of feeling as extended side angle or any of those postures. We're looking underneath even for a wild thing or the time that we look underneath the arm. Rolling the top shoulder open, deep breath in and out. Maybe you have the bind. Keep both sitting bones rooted down, deep breath. Rise all the way up, extend your legs out in front of you. Again, option for a reverse tabletop or Pomotanasana. So either your knees bent or try to keep your legs straight and aim to get your toes on the mat. I still don't have that, but I don't hate this pose as much as I used to. Sometimes you can start with the toes down on the mat and kind of this long bend of the knees and then lift the hips up and work the toes toward the mat. So either in tabletop or straight leg position. <laughs> Get the palms underneath the shoulders, maybe as you lift the hips, the head tilts back. Pogo Tanasana or reverse tabletop. Try to lift the hips high, your toes to the mat for three, two, and one. Release. Shake out your legs a 
a little bit. Now we'll make our way down onto our back. I'm going to turn myself this way on my mat. Reach your arms forward and slowly, slowly, using your core strength, roll down onto your back. And as you get there, hug your knees into your chest, up and up and up. We'll take that pigeon shape again. Right ankle will cross on top of the left knee and bring that left knee in toward your chest. Feel free to pull it more to the left. I love to do that. Push your right knee away at the same time. You can even use your elbow or your hand. Feel free to stay here or you can extend your top leg. Get also a hamstring and calf stretch. into a supine twist so you're welcome to keep this shape and drop the whole thing over to the left or maybe you cross your thighs more maybe you hook your right toes for more of a twisted root knees will drop to the left you could also stack your knees together any variation of a supine twist knees to the left looking over your right shoulder Steady breath. Both hands to the mat, use your core, bring your feet back to center, unwind, give your legs and arms a little shake, a little adult temper, temper tantrum, <laughs> feels good, and then cross your left ankle over your right thigh, hug in. if you like. Maybe you're pushing your left knee away. We'll bring all of this into a twist. So practice your arms. You can keep this figure four shape. You could take a deeper twist, thigh over thigh, maybe hook the toes or stack your knees. Maybe you jog your hips a bit to the left and knees will come to the right. Look over top of your left arm. Take any variation that you took on the other side. and maybe other delicious foods that aren't necessarily good for us. So keep up your yoga practice. I'll be here teaching tomorrow night in Saturday morning power. You'll earn your chocolate if you come to power. Sunday evening yin, that will be a really beautiful practice at 7.15. And then Monday evening, same time as this power. We'll just keep going. Keep going. That's all we can do. Bring some consistency, normality into our lives. Bring your arms back out, bring your knees back in. Hug your knees into your chest. Give yourself a nice squeeze. We have enough time for an inversion here. We'll bring you right to the end with the practice and then you can take your Shavasana on your own. So options for inversions, happy baby pose, Vikarita Karani, bow pose or shoulder stand. If you're a headstand person, you wanna to go to a wall or stay on your mat, here's happy baby pose. So let's take 10 breaths, whichever inversion you've chosen. Here's Vikarita Karani. Cloud pose, legs over the head. Shoulder stand, Sarvangasana, legs straight up. 
you're going for Shirshasana, make sure you take some rest afterwards. And if you're in plow pose or shoulder stand, come down slowly when you're ready. Take your time and maybe you take a fish pose at the end. I'll let you decide what poses were the best for you. I've been thinking about something. I'm just going to plant a little seed to who's ever listening. When my birthday happens to fall in a couple of weeks, a few weeks, and it's on a Saturday when I will be teaching power yoga, hopefully to you. And I thought it would be really nice. A lot of people have asked me about making donations to me, and I definitely am not interested in that. But I've asked people if they want to donate to just donate to a cause. But there's a really beautiful cause out there, a charity called Back, Backpack Buddies. And they give money or they give food to children to let them um, get through the weekend. So they, they get food at school through their school program, but they might not have weekend food. But now the charity is giving food all week long and they're really strapped. So I don't know, put some comments on the, the Facebook after or let me know through private messages if you'd be interested. I'd love to raise some money for them. So Backpack Buddies maybe as a little birthday, virtual birthday fundraiser. Anyways, as you're ready, come down out of your shavasana, uh, out of your inversion. Any last shape that you would like to take, and then we'll make our way into shavasana. So I'll leave you with a couple minutes of music here. Give a little flow off to you. This uh, song by Soul Rising, it's called Pure Space. And I love it for shavasana because of the heartbeat. So find your own heartbeat and match it to the rhythm of the one in this music and let yourself go deep don't skip the shavasana take five minutes you've got lots of time these days so take this time for yourself and feel that connection to your manipur chakra your place of empowerment self-esteem and confidence and know that you can take this same expression that you've created in your yoga practice out into the world in so many beautiful ways and i hope you do that even if it's virtually as many of us are right now if you can give from that place it's an endless pool thank you so much for sharing with me whether it's virtually right now or if you're watching this class later it means so much to me honestly namaste